The report captures cases of human rights abuse by government or its assigns. The United States Department of State cites issues of arbitrary or unlawful killings, inhuman treatment, as well as violence and threats against journalists as major cases of infringement on the rights of Ghanaians in 2021. This report generated reaction among a section of Ghanaians, while some believe the content of the report should be considered with all seriousness, others are of the view that the publication should be treated with contempt. Professor Kwesi Enin of the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Center has described it as unnecessary. For me, we should locate our concerns within what is consistently raised by Ghanaian radical voices. What is it that makes the State Department talking about problems that we talk about on a daily basis much more important than what we do? When Professor Jima Gwede raised his voice, or his voice, and he wrote that he was criticized, where was the U.S. government? They kept quiet. When Kwesi Pratt speaks, and he's being held down, where the U.S. government? My point is very simple. Until we learn to respect and dignify the voices that seek to bring the rule of law, the respect for human rights, transparency, accountability, instead of always denigrating ourselves and placing emphasis and importance on other people's perception. People who don't give a damn about us anyway, they don't have an issue uh, uh, with whatever is in that report. It's something that Ghanaians are talking about. Those are the things that we should be concerned about. So for me, this report, this is, this is a routine annual raid. But a member of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament who is a former senior police officer believes the publication is damning. I think this report is damning. It's quite disappointing, very particularly when you have somebody we all believe is a human rights lawyer at the helm of affairs as the president of the republic. We expect that the country's human rights record under him should be the best. Unfortunately, it's, the performance is so dismal, according to this report, and it's sad. The report identified unlawful killings allegedly committed by security agencies as an indicator of human rights abuse in Ghana. The U.S. Department of State highlighted the killing of some eight persons during the 2020 post as an example. According to the report, two of the persons were killed by the National Election Security Task Force composed of military and police units, while at least two deaths were caused by civilian violence. These deaths have been a matter of concerns for stakeholders since 2020, especially families of the victims. One of the most referenced is Techiman South, controversies over the coalition and declaration of the parliamentary resource, which is now a subject of an election petition led to shooting by security officers who resulted in the death of some residents. The families have since then demanded an inquiry into the matter and justice for their dead or injured relatives. With this report, the families believe government has not paid attention to their plights. If the human rights, the United Nations has brought this information, it is the way how the government was handling the, the issue. That is why they too, it is not the right that the government should, should handle the issue on that way. That is why they, they, they brought this, they, 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 this statement. Very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Because that is why I'm saying that. Since this, this thing happened, they came here and then give us a big promise that they, they will follow the matter and bring the justice out. If I may ask, up to now, why is the justice now? They came and promised the family that they will bring the justice. They will let the family get their justice and their right. So where is the justice? According to the report, investigations are ongoing in these killings. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry in June 2021 paid a visit to the affected families apologized for the happenings and assured of investigations into the matter. But many have questioned why it will take the security apparatus more than a year to conclude investigations into such happenings. These were clear cases of, of shooting to death of innocent people at the polling station. So this is clear a murder case. What are the investigative steps to take? They are just normal. Who was there? Gathered some information around, gathered some intelligence. Who were those carrying the arms? What bullet killed who? The autopsy report will connect you to some kind of arms or some kind of weapons. And who were those carrying such weapons at the scene? 
And when you get those who are carrying weapons, you just go to the National Election Security Tax Force and find out who did you deploy there? What were the reports? And this is not a very difficult thing to do. Unless it is a state frustrated system. The death of Ibrahim Mohammed, known as Kaka, in Nigeria was also cited as an example of arbitrary killings. Kaka, who was said to be a member of Economic Fighters League, was killed in his home in Nigeria by some unknown assailants. According to the United States Department of State report, the deceased was said to have received death threats prior to the killing. The aftermath of this led to a protest by the youth of Nigeria which resulted in the death of two other persons when the military opened fire on them. An inquiry into the shooting later revealed that the Ashanti Regional Minister ordered for the military backup into the community by Peter Lanchini Tobu, who is a former executive secretary at the office of the IGP, believes it is such actions by political officers that results in abuses. Can you imagine? A DC who has just been appointed, he has no clue about what security is. And by virtue of that appointment, he becomes the chairman of the district security council, controlling the police and controlling the military and controlling everybody in uniform under him or her. Without any experience, that is a danger. And I think that the country is moving forward and our democracy is developing. We need to begin to look at empowering civilians to understand security perspective in governance. And gradually we'll have a better way to go. Democracy is always by civilians. But we need to let the civilians appreciate that if you have security officers working under you, they need to be accepted as experts in particular areas. And they have to advise you, the civilian, you don't dictate the pace for them. If you dictate the pace for them and you want to be politically right, you can be politically right, but it can be a security mess and gradually the country suffers. The report cited Caleb Kudes' arrest and that of David Tamaklu as examples of arbitrary arrest and violence against the media. But Mr. Tobo believes that this occurred because civilian authorities have a say in the deployment of security officers. To buttress this point, Mr. Tobo pointed to the absence of bad publicity on DSP Azugo, who was in charge of the SWAT team that orchestrated the Iowa's West work on by election violence and the arrest of City News' Caleb Koda and Zoe Abubeidu Ado following his transfer to work directly under the IGP as justification. I can tell you as a matter of fact, if we professionalize our civilian approach to managing security, many of these security officers you see are so professional. Let me give you an example. Have you ever heard of DSP Azugu? When DSP Azugu was working with the National Security SWAT team, his name was everywhere. When he left the SWAT team, up to the, have you heard of his name again? Directly under the Inspector General of the Police, he cannot do the things that he was doing at the National Security SWAT team. You think he was influenced at the SWAT team? team to be doing on what he was doing. I am telling you that without proper command and control, if you let a uniform officer loose, they can do worse things. But DSP Azugu, as we speak today, cannot, I repeat, cannot do the things that he, were, he was accused of or seen doing under the SWAT team of the national security. It tells you that let's allow the chief of defense staff, let's allow the inspector general of police, let's allow the director of the national intelligence bureau, let's allow these chiefs to have control over their men. And when we have a tax, Let's assign it to the rightful agency and give them the room to perform. And I'm sure that professionalism will be at the top. The report also found prison conditions to be generally harsh and sometimes life-threatening due to overcrowding, inadequate sanitary conditions, lack of medical care, physical abuse, and food shortage. According to the report, in September, the Ghana Prison Service reported prison overcrowding stood at 135% of capacity with a prison population of 13,480 compared to a total prison capacity of 9,945 inmates. The report indicated that the general practice of holding detainees without proper warrant or charge continued. It cited the arrest of some 21 lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or intersex activists in the city of Ho as an example. According to them, Authorities released the activist on June 11 and dropped the case on August 5. The report also indicated that judicial officers reportedly accepted bribes to expedite or postpone cases, lose records, or issue favorable rulings for the payer of the bribe. The report, however, indicated that there were no reports of political prisoners or detainees. It also indicated that citizens had access to courts to bring lawsuits seeking damages for or cessation of human rights abuses.